Last week we hinted that we'd be heading to Croatia, and in fact we are. Luca graciously volunteered to help us with our shakedown. We finally got Blackbird into the water after eight months on the hard in Greece. It felt like a victory just to get our boat in the water for me. Our first leg is going to take us from Elmira shipyard around the Peloponnesus Peninsula up to Lefkada. We have to travel around the peninsula because, as you recall, the Corinth Canal is closed because of damages. We left anticipating a 56 hour headwind motor sailing slugfest. And that's in fact what we had. Finally, we had some numbers on our electronics to display. Within five minutes of being on the water, we had an alarm go off and the starboard engine had overheated. 30 seconds later, the port engine overheated. The port engine, we figured out finally that it just didn't have enough antifreeze put in it from when the engine was serviced. Then we started working on the starboard engine and figured out that again, the same people never replaced the impeller, though they charged us for it. Fortunately for us, we had a spare on board and within five minutes, we had it fixed, repaired, engine started again, and off we went. And then we had an alarm go off, low voltage alarm. So we cleared out the alarms and checked the voltages all the way around, all of our batteries, and they all appeared fine. So we're thinking it might have been a loose cable. Wow, this was really the first time we've got to experience our boat on the sea, looking out over the water. After only seeing gravel through this window for the better part of a year, it was really good to finally see water through this window. Our watches were two hours on and four hours off. It wasn't too bad, except Ginger was definitely not feeling well. I think she got a little seasick. On my first watch, I actually saw a sea turtle. The picture doesn't show up very well, but it actually is a sea turtle. We're on two hour watch shifts. So when you're off, you get about a four hour break to sleep, eat, and, um, and deal with the cat. Man, I'm tired. By the third day, we we're all sleeping wherever we could find a spot. Usually it was the closest flat spot we could find. Ginger still wasn't too happy, but at least she found the outside flat spot to sit on. The third morning was really glassy smooth and it was a welcome relief. The sun was out, it was a beautiful day, and we were having fun. By the 50th plus hour, we were all pretty exhausted. And Ginger would find the person who was not on watch and sleep with them. She was starting to feel a little bit better. After 56 hours, we decided to stop in Lefkada. On your way to Lefkada, you sail past this beautiful Venetian village and a villa on its own island. In order to get to Lefkada, you travel through a canal which was built in 7th century BC. In Lefkada, we picked up Marta for some fun. We found a nice secluded bay, 
stayed overnight, got some snorkeling in and some water time because the water was starting to warm up. We saw tons of little fish, sea sponges, and we actually found a really neat cave. Yeah, this cave was actually converted into a church at some point. And inside there's a statue or altar to St. Nicholas. The north end of the canal has this really cool bridge that spins its way open once every hour. Lake number two was Lefkada to Corfu, where we anchored around 11.30 p.m. that night. In the morning, we woke up to this magnificent view. We had anchored underneath this beautiful Venetian castle. It was a beautiful morning with lots of color in the sky. About an hour after sunrise, we were greeted by our very first dolphins of the trip. Ginger finally got her sea legs and joined Guy at the helm one early morning. That was really nice to see. It was really nice to see Ginger starting to relax. Later that day, we had another dolphin sighting. This pod had about 10 dolphins in it and they put on quite a show for us. One dolphin in particular was spectacular. Let's look at that again. It's got the height, full layout, perfect 10. After 637.8 nautical miles, we finally spotted Dubrovnik. You check into customs at Gruz Harbor, where you enter through this amazing suspension bridge. It was even more dramatic on this dark and cloudy day. The scars of Croatia's recent war are still visible throughout the city. Adjacent to where our boat was moored, there's a building that still has scars from the battle. The marina was actually located practically in the city center. One of the days here, we decided to check out ancient Dubrovnik. It is an incredible city and you might recognize it from the Game of Thrones. A lot of the Game of Thrones King's Landing footage was filmed in this ancient medieval Venetian city. This ancient city looks a lot like Venice to me. The building construction, the streets, the old alleys, the tile roofs, the marble, it all looks like Venice without the canals. It's a beautiful place to be. There were some hidden gems in this city, like this beach that's clinging to the ancient medieval wall. In our next video, we say goodbye to our good friend Luca and set sail on our own. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, please leave them below. We love to read your comments. Absolutely, thank you so much. We'll see you next time on Sailing Blackbird. Bye-bye.
<laughs> thanks thanks for watching so much for watching. <laughs> Stop.